that, our first speaker, uh, Jiajin San uh, Chen, uh, will be uh, talking about uh, deep DRIM, a deep neural network to reconstruct cell type specific gene regulatory network using uh, single cell RNA seq data. Uh, Jiajin, if you can share and start, that would be great. Judging, you're, you're mute. You have to unmute yourself. There's a, you are mute. So there's an unmute button. So I'll unmute you. Okay. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Um, uh, so can you hear my voice now? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, so uh, my name is Jia Xin Chen from Department of Computer Science, Hong Kong Baptist University. Uh, today, our topic is about uh, Deep Dream, a deep neural network to reconstruct cell type specific gene regulatory network using the single cell RNA seq data. Um, so, first, let's, let me uh, give a brief introduction to the gene regulatory network uh, or GRN here. Uh, we know uh, gene carry the genetic information, and if the product of gene 1 can bind in with the uh, DNA region of the gene 2 and the influence the uh, expression level of gene 2, then we can call that gene 1 can regulate gene 2. So a uh, gene regulatory network is a type of network where the node refers to the genes and the edges refers to that uh, the regulatory interaction. Um, gene regulatory network is important because it can help us understand the mechanism of disease or other biological process. But however, it is hard to uh, know all the gene regulatory network for all the cell type uh, only by the wet lab experiment. So we need a type of algorithm which to uh, reconstruct the GRN from the gene expression profile by reverse engineering. Um, people have developed uh, some algorithms for the uh, bulk data. However, bulk data and the single cell sequencing data are quite different. Because bulk data can only get the average gene expression for, from all cells, while single cell RNA sequencing can get the expression level for uh, in a cell resolution. So each cell type will have a distinct expression profile. And that makes it possible to predict the GRN from the single cell RNA sequencing data. Well, single cell RNA sequencing data still have a problem of their dropout. So uh, it is uh, not applicable to apply their bulk, uh, their algorithm developed for bulk data to their single cell RNA sequencing data because it do not deal with their dropout problem and their heterogeneity problem. Well, uh, people also develop several uh, algorithms specifically for their single cell data. Um, however, uh, Based on this uh, review paper, that uh, the performance for most uh, algorithms do not perform very well, in, uh, especially when we use the cell type specific chip seq data as the gold standard. And uh, some of them are even close to random predictor. So, um, because these algorithms are unsupervised and they have a various assumption for their data distribution or something else. So, uh, we are thinking about maybe we can use the supervised method to predict the GRN for the cell type data. Uh, so um, uh, we can use the chipstick technology for several TF and the get the partially known GRN in the cell type. And the least known uh, interaction for, this, for some TF can be used as the training data. And we can use them to train the deep neural network and then after the model is training well, we can use that to predict the remain pairs in the network so that we can get the whole GRN in the cell type. Um, uh, previous work uh, have proposed a supervised deep neural network, which is named the CNNC. Uh, it represents the joint expression of our gene pairs as an image and they use uh, convolutional neural networks to predict gene-gene co-expression from single cell RNA sequencing data. 
Uh, for example, if we want to know the interaction between gene A and B, then we can use the expression of these two genes and then transform them into a two-dimensional histogram, which can be regarded as an image here. And the image can be uh, used as the input of the signal and the two particular interaction. Um, however, only consider the gene expression of the two genes may be insufficient, especially in this case, transitive interaction. Uh, let's see this is example. Um, for the left figure, we have a gold standard. Um, suppose gene A can regulate gene B and gene B can regulate gene C, and there is no direct interaction between gene A and C. However, because they have a transitive interaction, the co-expression between gene A and C are, can be very strong. So for uh, models that only consider the co-expression uh, information, they can falsely predict that gene A and C have an interaction, which should be wrong here. So uh, this is called false positive, and we should eliminate these kinds of false positive due to the transitive interaction. So, uh, so we propose to include more information of neighbors into the model. Um, for example, here uh, we have a network of four nodes, and if we want to predict the interaction between gene two and three, and the uh, image is generated by gene two and three expression can be uh, regarded as primary Im images. And uh, we can also consider the information of neighbor of gene three and uh, generate the images for, uh, uh, of exp uh, from expression of gene three and one, and also expression from three and four. And uh, uh, these kinds of images are called as neighbor images. We can uh, include not only primary image, but also neighbor images into the model. And there we test the performance compared with another model, which only use the primary images as input. Uh, let's see some example from the simulation experiments. Um, first, for this network, uh, we want to predict the interaction between gene one and two, and the correlation value between these two genes can be very high. So both model can give a high confidential score for, uh, for this pair. And there, this is another similar example. But in this case, uh, suppose we want to know the uh, interaction between uh, gene two and three, and there's no direct interaction, but they have a transitive interaction. So the correlation value between gene two and three can still be very large. Um, so the model, if they only consider primary image, it will give a high score uh, for, for this case. But if we consider the neighbor images also, they can uh, help to remove this kind of uh, false positive. And here is uh, another similar example here. So uh, this experiment shows that the uh, neighbor images can be very useful when we try to predict the gene regulatory network uh, in cell type specific data. So here comes to uh, our model. Uh, our model is a deep neural network to reconstruct GRN using single cell RNA data. It is called DeepGen. Um, the model can, uh, input can be divided into two parts. The first is primary images, and the, uh, the second part is neighbor images. We can uh, concatenate these neighbor images together and uh, uh, make them into a neighbor images tensor. And then the neighbor image tensor and also the primary images will uh, used as the input of the deep neural network. Uh, the deep neural network uh, is composed of two components. The first component is uh, network A, which is designed for process the primary images, and it will give an embedding from that one. And the uh, network A follows VGGNet, which is similar to the network structure of CNNC. Um, Another component is network B, and network B is a semi like neural network, which is designed for processing multiple neighbor images. Um, it means that uh, all the images will go through the uh, network which share with here. So uh, for each neighbor images, it will get an embedding for that. So uh, after we combine all the embeddings for each, for each images, we will have a concatenate long vector, and the vector will go through a fully connected layers and finally get a prediction for this pair. So this is a detail for the network structure. Uh, we have a, a 
network A and the network B. For the input of network A, the size is uh, 32 by 32. And it will go through several uh, convolutional layer, maximum pooling layer, or flatten layer, and dense layer, and then get an embedding. For, next, for network B, we'll, uh, the network structure is quite similar to network A. However, uh, uh, each neighbor images will go through the network B, and uh, they share the same width here. Uh, uh, why they share the same width here? Um, because um, in this model, uh, all the neighbor images here uh, actually play the same role here. Uh, they are used as the context of the uh, network. It will give the suggestion for, for the prediction whether uh, they will compare to the context, context with the and the primary image's value so that then we'll uh, try to uh, eliminate the uh, false positive false positive due to the transitive detection. So this is the network structure. Um, we did uh, experiments uh, from, from real single cell sequencing data sets, uh, which are collected from uh, eight uh, cell lines from mouse and the human. The size of training sets uh, is, are from 28,000 to 100,000. And some of the data set also include the information of pseudo time. Um, first, we compare deep dream with the uh, Pearson correlation coefficient and their neutral information. Uh, these two are commonly used algorithms for uh, predict uh, GRM for bulk data. And also Gen3. Gen3 uh, have their best performance in a challenge of the GRM reconstruction for bulk data. And also the CNC here. So uh, the the result here is uh, the box plot of the uh, AORC and also AOPRC value for all the different TFS and the, in the different data sets. And the color here refers to different algorithms. Um, given the results, we can see that our methods have their best performance. And uh, you also have their significant improvement when we compare to CNNC. And then we look into the false positive. Uh, we can see that Deep Dream also reduced the false positive compared to CNNC in all the uh, cell lines data. Uh, second, we also compare our method to uh, uh, some algorithms that specifically uh, designed for single cell data. And our methods is still the best. And uh, uh, it also uh, shows the significant improvement compared to the second best uh, algorithm. Uh, we test uh, the robustness of our methods. And for figure A and B, we show the, uh, our methods is robust when the data have different data quality, such as the cell number or the dropout probability. Um, for figure C, it shows that if we include more neighbors information, then the performance will be better. But we still need to uh, balance between the efficiency, the memory cost, and the accuracy. So in our experiments, the default value of the Gene number, uh, neighbor gene number is 10 here. Uh, the figure, and the last figure shows that uh, if the size of training set is larger than 20,000, then the performance of our model can be uh, acceptable. Uh, lastly, we also apply uh, our method to uh, real single cell data to study the uh, patients uh, of COVID-19. Um, this data includes uh, three healthy control, three mild patient, and the uh, six severe patient. Um, because the immune res response have been reported to be distinct between mild patient and severe patient. So we focus on the uh, B cell specific GRNs as here. Um, so first we use uh, single cell data from healthy controls and the B cell specific chip seq data from the data sets as the training data to train the deep, deep dream. And after the deep dream is trained well, we will use it to predict the GRN for mild and also for the severe patient, especially for the detected differential expression TFS. Uh, our findings shows that um, first, uh, we observed that the TFS had significantly more targets in the B cells of patients with severe symptoms, suggesting that uh, the DTFS are more active in working with their target genes. Uh, second, we also apply a network analysis. Um, 
After we predict the B cell specific GRNS uh, for severe patients by deep dream, we get uh, we did edge filters. We only keep the edges that rank in the top 0.1%. And then we apply page rank to the remain network. And the, so that uh, for each gene, we get the important score for it in this network. And finally, we will apply functional analysis. So let's see this figure. It shows some uh, uh, important no, uh, genes in this, uh, in this GRN. And the, uh, the genes are colored in red. And the blue color node refers to the geotomes that are associated with these genes. We have some uh, findings. Um, first, these genes are related to response to decreased oxygen level, response to hypoxia. And the, uh, the decreased oxygen level will uh, cause the DNA damages. So um, the DNA damage response here, and uh, it is also uh, related to negative regulation of mitototic cell cycle, and also intrinsic apoptotic signaling pathway. And the list findings are consistent with, with uh, previous uh, publications. Mm, it is reported that the uh, patients uh, have low oxygen level, in, uh, especially in the severe, severe patient. And these are strongly correlated with the GEO modules response to decreased oxygen level and associated with the intrinsic apoptotic signaling pathway. And it is also reported that the genes related to the apoptotic could lead to lymphopenia in patients with COVID-19. So uh, uh, these findings uh, shows that uh, our method, Deep Dream, can, uh, it's, it's capable of uh, to uh, give us some uh, useful information uh, to understand the me mechanism in disease and other biological processes. Um, so uh, here comes to the conclusion. Um, first, we develop Deep Dream, a novel surprise deep neural network, and uh, it will uh, use the image as input and uh, also consider the information of neighbors. And uh, all methods can eliminate the false positive, especially due to transitive interactions. Uh, we compare our methods with other uh, nine existing GRN reconstruction algorithms, and our methods is the best in these uh, eight cell lines. Uh, lastly, we apply deep gene to B cell single cell sequencing data from the patients of COVID-19 and find have some interesting findings. Okay, uh, that's all. I would like to thank to my colleagues who also works in this project and thank for uh, those fundings provided by Hong Kong Research Grant Council, Hong Kong BU, and et cetera. Um, our methods uh, is published in briefings in bioinformatics, and the software is open source and available in GitHub. OK, that's all. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Any questions? Thank you, uh, Jia Chen. Um, um, we have one question, and but before that, I want to remind everybody that we are recording all the talks. And if you have the permission to post your talk, they will be available after the meeting is finished. Uh, so we have uh, two questions, and I will be just reading them for you. Uh, how do you decide which gene pair would you would you take as primary and which pair as neighboring? That is uh, the first part of the question. And does that mean the same uh, prior, uh, does that mean you take some prior network? If so, use a separate prior for each cell type? Um, for the first question, uh, uh, the primary image is that uh, if we want to know the interaction between G, A, and B, and the solar images for G, A, and B should be the primary image because it is the target gene pair we want to know, so it is primary. Um, for the neighbor images, um, because we uh, it includes gene A and B, so we will try to find a neighbor of gene A and neighbor for the gene B. Uh, here, we, we did try several strategies to collect the uh, top neighbors. And the, here in our experiments, the, uh, the methods that uh, have the best performance is that we have uh, uh, what we try to calculate the positive covariance between uh, allergens with gene A and the collector top genes that have their top positive covariance with that one. And that are used as their uh, neighbor images here. And we did try other methods like correlation and et cetera. It can, 
it's up to your data sets actually, but we will recommend coerence here. And there for the second question. Okay, so how do you use ChIP-seq data? You assume that all genes binding uh, TF are co-expressed? Um, uh, let's see, all genes binding to a TF are co-expression. Okay, um, this is one assumption that uh, genes binding to a TF are co-expressed, but it is uh, not enough because uh, uh, the genes uh, are the genes that also have high co-expression that do not uh, necessarily have regulatory interaction. So yes, uh, actually in our model, uh, the assumption that the model should uh, the, the gene that if they have regulatory interaction, they should have high co-expression here. So yeah, and the chain data is used as the chaining data. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And this was the time we had for the first talk. Uh, second